Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, excuse my funny little hat. I've been at uni today and I'll have hat here if I take it off. So I'm just going to film it with my hat on. Today I'm doing my foundation swatch video, which is a follow up to my concealer swatch video in kind of a similar format where I do foundation swatches of all the foundations I have, which is over 70, I believe. And I also do a couple of little like extra categories like I have one where I'm going to show you all of the lightest foundations I have so you can kind of see the lightest shades swatched next to each other as well as a couple of brand comparisons um, like comparisons of the same shades within a brand things like that just they just seemed like extra helpful categories I've tried to range them starting with the most full coverage foundations that I have liquid foundations to my lightest formulas and then I do stick foundations and I also do BB creams and CC creams and things like that as well so I tried to organize it in some way um, and I also tried to keep uh, Max NC10 Studio Fix Fluid as a kind of guide. If you wanted to screenshot the swatches you could kind of use the MAC NC10 as a guide. I tried to keep the lighting the same but I did have a little bit of a break in my filming just because I had a class to get to um, but I tried to use the same natural lighting so that hopefully the swatches would come out accurate it's just quite difficult i didn't want to use artificial lighting because i find my artificial lighting can be a little bit um disruptive for the color the true color of the swatches i feel like natural lighting is the best so just a quick point as well i don't talk so much about formula in these videos this is purely about the colors i'm going to be doing videos later in the year where i talk about my favorite formulas or perhaps the foundations themselves that i love the best things like that so stay tuned for those videos they're going to be coming later in the year i'm really excited about them but i just wanted to do a kind of cataloging of my foundation collection so that i can refer you guys to this whenever you want to know like what something looks like swatch next to xyz um obviously with 70 plus products i can't swatch every product next to every product or i would be like covered in swatches it was just very logistically quite hard so that's why i chose to do the kind of guide color using max nc10 i felt like that was a good compromise for such a predicament that I found myself in. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy this video and don't forget to give it a thumbs up for me if you do and let's get started with the swatches. So here we go I'm using MAC Studio Fix Fluid and NC10 as a reference shade so it's going to be in every swatch um, clip so that you can get a reference of how the other shades compare. So that's MAC Studio Fix Fluid and NC10. This is the Jouer Essential High Coverage Cream Foundation in Alabaster. This is the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation in Ivory Light 10. This is Dermacol 208. This is Kat Von D Locket Tattoo Foundation in L41. And this is the shade in L42. This is the Cover FX Power Play Foundation in N0. This is the Maybelline Superstay 24 Hour Foundation in the shade 102 Fair Porcelain. This is Huda Beauty Foundation in Milkshake, which is also 100B. And this is the Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation in 0 0.5. So once again, we're starting out with MAC Studio Fix Fluid in NC10 as a reference. This is MAC Studio Fix Fluid in NW10. This is the YSL All Hours Foundation in B10. This is the Lancome Teint Adol Ultra 24 Hour in 090 Ivory. This is the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation in the shade Oslo. This is the Illamasqua Skin Base in O2. This is the Cover FX Natural Finish Oil Free Foundation in N0. This is the Revlon Color Stay Full Cover Foundation in 110 Ivory. This is the Revolution Pro Full Cover Camouflage Foundation in F1. And this is the Essence Camouflage 2-in-1 Makeup and Concealer in the shade 10 Ivory. So this is MAC Studio Fix Fluid in NC10. Just note it is drying a bit because this one's being left on my arm a bit longer. So again, do keep that in mind. It doesn't oxidize as such, but it does have a bit of dry down at the top here. This is the Eden Minerals Nordic Vale Correcting Longwear Mineral Foundation in the shade Yorin, which starts with a J. <laughs> this is the Bare Minerals Bare Pro Performance Wear Liquid Foundation in the shade Fair 01. This is Fenty Beauty Foundation in the shade 100. This is the Designer Brands Luminous Hydrating Foundation in Porcelain Ivory. This is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation in the shade 0N1 Alabaster. This is the Mecca Max Life Proof Longwear Foundation in the shade Porcelain. This is the Colourpop No Filter Foundation in, in 5 Fair. And the same foundation in 10 Fair. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless Foundation in 102 Fair Porcelain and 110 Porcelain. 
This is a fresh swatch of the MAC Studio Fix Fluid in NC10. This is NARS Sheer Glow in the shade Siberia. This is the gorgeous Cosmetics Base Perfect Liquid Foundation in the shade 00N. This is CYO Life Proof Long Lasting Foundation in the shade 101. This is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow Foundation in 201 Classic Ivory. This is the Designer Brands Matte Velvet Foundation in the shade Porcelain Ivory. This is the Milani Conceal One Perfect 2-in-1 Foundation and Concealer in the shade 00A Porcelain. This is the Too Faced Born This Way Foundation in the shade Snow. And this is the shade Swan. And this is the new shade Cloud. This is MAC Studio Fix Fluid in NC10 again. Here we have MAC Pro Long Wear Nourishing Waterproof Foundation in the shade NW13. This is the L'Oreal True Match Super Blendable Makeup in N1. And this is N0.5 and this is C0.5. This is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation in Y205. This is the A Pure Triple Wear Foundation in the shade Frozen. This is the Ordinary Coverage Foundation in 1.0N. This is the BH Cosmetics Naturally Flawless Foundation in the shade 201 Ivory. And this is the Chi Chi Fabulous and Flawless Foundation in 0.4 Shell. So here again is the MAC Studio Fix Fluid in NC10. This is the Tarte Shape Tape Hydrating Foundation in Porcelain. And this is the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Water Foundation in Porcelain. This is the Dior Backstage Foundation in the shade N0. This is the Rimmel Lasting Finish Breathable Foundation in 001 Light Ivory. This is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Nude Foundation in 1N0 Porcelain. This is the Australis Stay Put Longwear Foundation in the shade Porcelain. And this is the shade Snow. This is the Australis Liquid Elixir Foundation in the shade N10 Neutral. This is the NYX Total Control Drops in the shade Porcelain. This is the Josie Marin Vibrancy Foundation in the shade Dynamic. And this was very hard to swatch. This is the Sephora Airbrush Foundation in the shade Cream, but it's sort of just disappeared completely. It's, it's very hard to swatch. <laughs> so here we have some stick foundations. This though is the MAC Studio Fix Fluid in NC10 as a reference. Here we have the Revolution Makeup Stick Foundation in the shade F1. This is the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation in the shade Blanc. And this is the shade Cream. This is the Flesh Beauty Thick Stick, whatever it's called, foundation in the shade Froth. This is the Pony Effect Stick Foundation in the shade Fair. This is the Designer Brands Flawless All-in-One Foundation Stick in the shade Porcelain Ivory. And this is the Maybelline Fit Me Stick Foundation in the shade 110 Porcelain. So this is the MAC Studio Fix Fluid in NC10 as our reference. This is the, the Balm Balm Shelter Tinted Moisturizer in Lighter Than Light. This is the Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream in the shade 13. This is the Aqualustre Concealer Roller BB Cream by Bisutang in the shade 21. This is the Green BB Blemish Balm by Skin79. This is the Laneige Snow BB Cream. And this is the Laneige Cushion Whitening in the shade 11C. This is the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better CC Cream in the shade Fair. This is the Avene BB Cream in a uh, <coughs> universal shade, right. This is the YSL Fusion Ink Cushion Foundation in the shade 10. This is the Pony Effect Everlasting Cushion Foundation in Fair. Even though this isn't a BB cream, I realized I forgot to include this. This is the, the Ordinary Serum Foundation in the shade 1.0 NS. So this first swatch here is actually my Australis um, shade adjusting drops in the lightning shade. These are like the lightest of my lightning foundations or shade adjusting products that I have. So these are basically pretty much white. There's a slight tint of pink in there, but it's, it's very, very close to white. Next over we have the Flesh foundation stick in the shade Froth, which is very nearly white as well. It's, <laughs> it's super, super fair. I definitely got a shade that was way too light for me. I just ordered the lighter shade and probably needed a uh, second or third lightest in this line. It's great that it goes that fair, but yeah, much, much more of a highlighting stick for me. 
The next one over is the Australis Stay Put Longwear Foundation. This is in the new shade Snow, which is ultra pale. And it's awesome because this is an Australian brand. We really don't get many drugstore foundations that go super fair in Australia. So it's awesome that they've released a shade this fair. Even though this line has terrible shade ranges at the other end of the spectrum, um, I don't like supporting it in that way, but the fact that they do come out with shade this fair is quite helpful because it means that um, even if you're not this fair, like I'm, I just can't really wear this, it's too ghostly on me, but it's a great mixer to have that you can mix in with other shades. I actually find a good shade for me is mixing the shade Snow with the shade Up Porcelain which is too dark for me so I can get a good shade if I mix the two. Next up we have the Aqualustre Concealer Roller BB Cream by Bisu Tang and this is in the shade 21 which is very very fair, uh, one of my fairest BB creams that I have or Asian beauty products. This is Kat Von D's Lock It Tattoo Foundation in L41 which as I said earlier is a really great undertone for me but it's just too light. I feel a little bit mask light especially because it's so full coverage. I find that I can get away with quite fair products if they're more medium but if they're very very full like this it just looks like a big mask. The next over is the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation in Blanc. Again one that if I wear more like medium coverage I can totally wear the shade but if I try to build it up it does look a bit mask like. The next shade over is the new Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation in the shade 0N1 Alabaster, which I was so thrilled when I saw this shade come out because it is so, so fair. It's now one of my fairest foundations and it's great that they've really expanded that range to such a fair level. Next over we have the Too Faced Born This Way. This is in the new shade Cloud, which again, I used in a tutorial the other day. I can totally get away with it, but I do find it looks best if I do warm up my skin with a bit of bronzer. Um, if I wear one layer, just a medium coverage, it looks really beautiful. It's a really good winter shade for me. But if I try and layer it up, it does look perhaps a little ghostly. I did notice in my video that I used it in um, I did two layers and I felt like it looked just a, maybe a bit ghostly so this is definitely a shade I wear one layer or maybe mix it with Swan or Snow just to get that in between colour. The next shade over is Eden Minerals Nordic Veil in Urine which is spelt with a J. And this is a very fair foundation. I definitely can wear this one alone. This is probably one of my best winter shades. So it's not quite as fair as these other ones obviously along here, um, but it's still a nice fair shade that's got a really nice neutral undertone. I think the undertone really matters for me. And this last one is the Huda Beauty Foundation in Milkshake. And this one, I think... I think again this one is just so full coverage that it can look a bit mask like on me even though the shade technically can blend in well with my neck it's just I think when things are really really full coverage it can be, make it a little bit harder for something to look like a perfect match but those are my lightest shades. Then I wanted to do some swatches of like the same brands, perhaps different shades from uh, the same brands you can kind of compare but also some brands where they label things the same shade but you know in different formulas and you can see some differences. So this first shade here is the Cover FX Power Play in N0 and next to it is the Natural Finish Foundation by Cover FX in N0 and as you can see the Power Play is just a touch lighter. I find the Natural Finish a better colour for me, it's just not quite as ghostly. Um, I just think it's a little bit more flattering on my skin tone, it just blends in just a bit more than the Power Play which just is perhaps a little bit too light. Next over we have the Estee Lauder Double Wear in the shade 0N1 Alabaster. This is much lighter you can see than the Double Wear Nude in the shade 1N0 Porcelain. 1N0 Porcelain is a little dark actually as a shade but because it's such a lightweight formula um, I can totally get away with it. Um, I can blend it in well. It just doesn't have as much coverage. If this had the coverage of the actual Double Wear then I feel like it would look too dark. So, But then I find Alabaster actually a little bit light. So I'm definitely somewhere in between the two for a perfect shade. But if I had to pick, I would actually pick going with um, one N0 porcelain just because it is. It, I can totally make that one work. I can really blend it in um, and it works a lot better, especially for a summer shade. Next over we have four Maybelline foundations. The first one is the Fit Me Foundation in 102 Fair Porcelain. And then we have the same product in 110 Porcelain. You can see that 110 is a little bit more of a neutral warm shade, whereas 102 is much more of a neutral cool foundation. And also 110 is just a hint darker. I used to wear 110 happily back in the day when that was the lightest shade available, but I typically prefer 
102 Fair Porcelain these days. It's a really good shade match for me, actually. The next one is the Maybelline Superstay Foundation in 102 Fair Porcelain, and you can see that is slightly more pink and a little bit deeper than the Fit Me. I prefer the shade of the Fit Me. It leans closer to neutral, whereas the Superstay does lean quite um, cool toned. So that for me just is a little too pink on my face. And then we have the Fit Me Stick Foundation, which as you can see is the darkest out of the lot, and that's in the shade 110, and it's very pink compared to 110 in the Fit Me Foundation liquid. So there is a lot of shade discrepancy with these ones. I would just really wanted to point that out. Then we have the two ordinary foundations that I have. First is the Coverage Foundation, this is in 1.0N, and I bought the Serum Foundation in 1.0NS, which I think means it has like a silver undertone or something, I didn't quite understand it, but I got two of the same sort of shades but in different undertone variances. They're very similar, um, I do feel like both of them do tend to oxidize quite a lot on my skin and go quite orangey, so I don't really love either one to be honest. The next over we have three designer brands foundations and these are all labelled porcelain ivory. The first one is the Hydrating Luminous Foundation and the second one is the Matte Velvet Foundation. These are both too dark for me, I do have to mix in white mixes or a lighter foundation. Then we have the Stick Foundation. I actually can wear this on its own. Um, it's a shade that's a pretty good match for me, perhaps leading a little more warm but especially because it doesn't have as much coverage I find I can really blend this out and I can totally wear that one. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video and found it useful. Again, do let me know in the comments below if you did and what other category you'd be kind of keen to see. And give this video a wee thumbs up if you did enjoy it. If you want to see more videos like this, then I'd highly recommend subscribing. And until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful couple of days and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!